HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, used by bodybuilders and used by men, just for TRT. Old school HCG, it's been around for many decades, used by bodybuilders on cycle and used classically in the regimen for post-cycle therapy after steroid users come off steroids. Also used by men with low T, organic low T, and also nowadays we use it for anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. And there's data, there's actual real data coming out just this year, 2019, about this by some really great doctors. The history of HCG is incredible. Initially discovered in the 1920s, it wasn't introduced into the medical field into 1931, and it was first discovered and used from animal pituitary extracts. Organon first put this into market as Pregnil, still used today. Then in the 1940s, with new manufacturing techniques, they were able to produce this from fertile women, pregnant women, by a purified technique of extracting it from their urine. Absolutely incredible and still going on today. Medical uses, let's talk about the 1950s and 60s. Now it's really in use during that time period. A lot different initially what the scope was than it is today. So initially for women, uterine bleeding, amenorrhea, Infertility, of course, with women, still today, and that was with having issues with ovulation. Now, in men, this is the most amazing disparity from way back when in the 50s and 60s to today, that it was prescribed for impotence, obesity, depression. It was said to be three times more effective versus testosterone for tired men. Absolute great history impotence, angina, heart disease, prostatitis. This is all the stuff for why it was made and why it was sent in the medical literature. Now, then into today, it was definitely restricted. So for today, it's used for women for anovulatory infertility, where they have problems with ovulation. And with men, hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. So that's a secondary hypogonadism where the pituitary is having problems and it's used for men in that fashion. Also today, it's being used widely for anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. This is a brand new use. It's a new day and things are going great in America and in other countries abroad where they're seeing finally that we could use this medicine to help recover men that are suffering from anabolic steroid use. And in 1954, this medicine was marketed with the HCG diet, as everyone's heard of, even still today, for caloric restrictive obesity treatment plan. Absolutely unbelievable. So in 1957, this was the most common prescribed weight loss medicine. And then in 1974 came the first federal FDA warning about the HCG diet. Now, I do not support the HCG diet. I've looked at the data on it and it's very interesting, but there's no conclusive data. And what it is, this HCG diet is, with a very restricted diet of less than 1,000 calories a day, taking HCG, some people think that it does something metabolically or it lowers your appetite, like an appetite suppressant, and you will sustain weight loss. Now, again, I'm against it. There's no data for it. I certainly never use it for this purpose. But of course, everyone knows this is interesting history that I present. Now, from the Fed level, this is not a controlled drug like anabolic steroids are. But some states have actually specified that HCG is a controlled drug. Very interesting. Pharmacology and structure. This is a hormone produced by the placenta in pregnant women. Amazing. It's the pregnancy sustaining hormone of life for women. Of course.
course, pregnant women. It's an oligosaccharide glycoprotein, and it has two units. The alpha subunit is the exact same as LH, FSH, and TSH, and it's the beta subunit that gives it HCG its unique properties. Now, it's interesting that HCG will hit across the effects in the Leydig and serotonin cells, the same as LH and FSH, but it appears that TSH is not stimulated, it's not active, those subunits. The specificity is not active, and it doesn't hit the thyroid tissue. This is some controversial data, and some people think that it does work on the thyroid. Again, hence the ACG diet and changing metabolism. I don't know. I don't know that anyone knows, and I do not think it has any effect directly on the thyroid. The peak effect pharmacodynamically of this medicine, HCG, is different intermuscularly versus subcutaneously. Intermuscularly is only six hours. Subcutaneously, 16 to 20 hours. Now, so many people ask me, Doc, is it better to use an IM or sub-Q? No one knows. It's all personalized. If you're using bigger doses, you have to use an IM. It's common sense. It's a big, big dose. If it's small doses, it's obviously okay to use it, and more obviously, you can use it subcutaneously. But you could even use it intermuscularly. So there's no conclusive data on that. That's all clinical, man per man. Used by bodybuilders or anabolic steroid users, on cycle and off cycle. What's happening? Anabolic steroid users take anabolic steroids. Everyone knows that the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis will be affected and will shut down. And the signals that come out, luteinizing hormone and focal stimulating hormone, are going to be shut down and minimized, certainly. And therefore, the stimulation on the Leydig and serotonin cells, testosterone and semen production, are going to be minimized or completely shut down. So, the theory is that bodybuilders, and I don't see them really doing this much anymore because they're on so much drugs... There's so much going on that it's just, this is just so minimal to give HCG injections when you're on so much steroid. It, it is very interesting. That's why we need studies, and that's why I'm conducting studies. So, on steroids, you're going to give HCG to stimulate your Leydig cells more, they feel, than the serotonin cells. So, that's what they do it for. Now, post psychotherapy, it's been classic. It's a classic PCT regimen with clomiphene and tamoxifen. These are the serums, HCG. They make up that classic milieu of post-cycle therapy. Now, also aromidase inhibitors are also in there in addition to this. It's all personalized. Now, men on TRT, using HCG for TRT alone and using HCG with TRT together, there's controversy. For this, and the controversy about this definitely comes down from that if you use HCG too much for too long, you're going to get desensitization of the Leydig and Sorotelli cells. It's those cells in the testicles that we're trying to protect. That's the thought that you take steroids, exogenous outside antigens, the brain is very sensitive, the feedback loop is shut off, so you're going to stimulate, you're going to bypass the brain and stimulate with HCG. Again, these are not selective estrogen receptor modulators. See those videos. Again, you're hitting directly the testicles to produce endogenous testosterone. Now, what happens? So you're producing endogenous testosterone bypassing the brain. The brain realizes it. It's amazing. No one understands. We don't understand this yet. That the feedback loop at a certain point, you could fool it for a certain time period, depending on who you are and what other drugs you want and how long you've done it and what other medical issues you have. So your brain sooner or later will realize. And then your pituitary and hypothalamus starts to change when you're on this concurrently with the feedback cycle and the Leydig and serotonin cells and the whole scenario, hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis, is just changed. That's what we don't know about. We don't know how long, how much, with other drugs, what the protocols are. That's what I need to work on. There's down regulation. 
it's amazing that there is data. Just this year, there's an amazing report that came out by amazing real physicians, fertility, and urologists in the world. The name of the article is in World Journal of Men's Health, March of 2019. Management of Anabolic Steroid-Induced Infertility, Novel Strategies for Fertility, Maintenance, and Recovery. Kudos to you, doctors. Excellent job, doctors. This is a real data bank, and I will discuss this going forward. The use of HCG in this study, in this paper, in addition to other papers, talks about using it for men that are coming off steroids, anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism, and for men that are on testosterone, TRT levels, and maintaining normal testosterone levels, and maintaining testicular size, and hopefully maintaining fertility while they're on testosterone. I think it's great. It's, the research is not there yet. We don't know. And it's all going to be about the side effects. Desensitization. When you're on testosterone, not to mention on steroids, are you desensitizing the Leydig and Serotoli cells, number one. Number two, systemic edema. We know that there's going to be intratesticular aromatization. There's also going to be outside systemic aromatization. Everyone knows if you take HCG, not to mention with steroids, you're going to get puffy. You're going to have aromatization. You're going to have increase in estradiol. Number three, cortisol and what I call rebound adrenal effects. We just don't know. We understand that there's in theory no crossover effect with ACTH, which is these are other peptide hormones in the pituitary with the adrenal glands. But I've seen men, I've seen changes in, in which cortisol levels in their labs, in their effect, in their body effects. Again, this is novel. This is not talked about from the academic to the bro science uh, data. So, but I'm seeing it. We're starting to see this adrenal effect and rebound effect come into play. We need to work on it with real endocrinologists. How I use HCG. I use it in three aspects. Number one, I use it for post cycle therapy as there's data now, thanks to these great physicians out there that are working like me for about the past 10 years. So anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. In that data paper that I presented, they're recommending up to 3,000 international units every other day during the period when they're coming off steroids to maintain fertility and to come off steroids. I think it's too much. I think it's way too much. You don't need that much. You can use less or even 750, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. I'm glad to see that they're doing it, but I think it's too much. And most of my patients and you guys out there, I think you agree with me. Number two, TRT. So using human chorionic anatropin for TRT itself to maintain fertility when you're on TRT, that's going to be giving testosterone injections with small doses every other day or classically two days a week from 250 units to 400 units subcutaneously or intermuscularly injected. And concurrently using TRT with HCG to lessen testicular atrophy. Those doses are definitely smaller. The problem is desensitization. Is it going to happen? So many men have told me, I've been doing this for 10 years, more than 10 years, with thousands and thousands of men. Most men have told me they can't stay on it that long, but some men do. We have no data. Most men can't maintain the injections. Most men say at a certain point, Doc, my testicles start to shrink despite using even increased doses of HCG. Dr. Chrysler, God bless his soul, he's passed on this last year. He used regimens of about 250 IUs, different regimens a day or two before the shot, and then two or three days after the shot, every other day, twice a week, different regimens. Again, this is for T or T patients trying to maintain fertility and to try to minimize the atrophy of the testicles. Now, TRT alone, just living on ACG for TRT, no one does it. We only do it for men, in my opinion, that are need to get fertile. 
So we stop testosterone. I don't like to give TRT and HCG together. Everyone knows that. If I do do it for a man, it's between me and that man. It's case by case. But I feel that if you want to use it for fertility, because that's the number one use, because it works very well for fertility. For many men, 98% of men, regardless of steroid use, they have to be under the age of 40, though. This will work and recover them for fertility. But you stop testosterone, put testosterone to the side, and then you give HCG doses of 1,500 up to 2,500. Rarely you need more than that. Two days a week, every other day, and you'll see within months, 90-something percent of men that I've seen, they maintain fertility, and that's incredible. HCG is an old medicine that is widely used across the board today, as I presented from bodybuilders to just men on TRT. As there's more men that are hypogonadal in the world that want to have children at all their ages, we're going to have to use HCG. It is really a miracle drug. I just like to use it simplified, and I don't like to use it for too long because of the side effects and desensitization. Thank you so much. I really hope this helps everyone. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.